welcome all. Thank you for checking out the dope show. If you like my content, please make sure you share it around. It greatly helps out my channel and helps to combat the YouTube suppression algorithms. Now, this episode is going to be a bit off topic, but still related to the Punisher Born uh, video I did, part one. So, you know, consider this DVD commentary, especially since uh, Blu ray skimp on that kind of content on us. I want to talk to you about some of the production problems I had while trying to create these videos. Namely, dealing with uh, unprofessional voice actors and uh, sound designers that uh, couldn't deliver. Now, let me be clear on a few things. Uh, this is not an act of vengeance, even though uh, that's very much part of my personality. Uh, two, I'm not going to be showing pictures or social media accounts to put these people on blast. And finally, this is not out of frustration. I take the whole experience as, uh, as a learning experience. So I figured, you know, why not share the growth? Now, on the point of uh, growth, what I'm, what I'm talking about is being a professional. I'm very pro-independent. I'm very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pro-freelancer. You know, I get really charged up about entrepreneurism and, you know, cutting the head off of your uh, bloodthirsty capitalist masters. When, uh, say, I'm in the mood for cheeseburger and fries, I spend my money at a local business. You know, when I can, I buy American products. I love working with other, you know, small-time people that are very passionate about, you know, their self-published novel or... Uh, independent film, whatever. So, you know, it really disappoints me when uh, I hire somebody or I work with somebody uh, who's independent who doesn't have any professionalism. And so, you know, I know that a lot of you out there, you know, maybe you, you're a musician, uh, you know, maybe you do voice work, you're an aspiring actor, maybe you're, you're a tattoo artist, you know, whatever it is, uh, you know, it's always important to remember that, you know, just because, you know, you don't work for some big corporation and pull a big paycheck and, you know, you just may, you know, working for, you know, small fees, uh, always maintain your professionalism, even if other people don't. You know, whether it be other people, you know, you hired or, you know, the person who's writing you a check, whatever it is, always keep your professionalism and always deliver on your obligations and don't waste other people's time and do your best to deliver on those obligations within the time constraints that you were given or that you agreed to. Now, on that same note, don't let other people waste your time either, because if you allow people uh, to waste your time, believe you me, they will waste your time with a fucking smile. So the Punisher Born series that I produced is um, it's a four-part graphic novel for the you know the part in Vietnam before it goes into the uh, you know, the deeper Punisher Max stuff. So it basically consists. Uh, I'd say five major characters, right? So we got Captain Frank Castle, we got Colonel Ottman, General Patton, Stevie Goodwin, and La Voice. Now, originally, I had only intended to cast myself as uh, in the role of the voice. And, you know, just some background, you know, some you know, small background sound effects, things like that. But due to... The, the problems that arose, I, you know, pretty much decided I'd had enough and just said, you know what, I'll just do it myself. So in total, uh, 
as far as people that actually accepted the roles we're talking about 11 different actors to cover um, you know various roles only four delivered with you know the utmost professionalism and you know and you know those people you know that you know who you are you're in the credits you know JD J Clarissa I appreciate it very much you know it was a pleasure to work with you I love working with professionals so you know obviously it's a Punisher comic so first person I cast was you know for the role of Captain Frank Castle and you know I struck gold with JD Munoz uh, he killed it he killed the role of Frank Castle and you know delivered and you know the project was off and running we're off to a great start so then the uh, next actor that I had hired was to play Stevie Goodwin as you know Stevie Goodwin has the the most uh, dialogue in the in the comic um, and we're just gonna call him Peter X now as I mentioned in a previous episode he had a slight uh, kind of northern intonation um, which I really liked and I felt like it would have given the characters you know, some some nice flavor now here's the thing regardless of how I approach an artist I give full disclosure especially if there's any you know if there's any profanity violence sexual content anything that might be considered sacrilegious which you know these days everything everything's sacrilegious but uh and, you know basically i make it pretty clear on how the work is going to be used and so uh after sending the info over to peter um i mean you know he, he already knew he was you know he's kind of familiar with the punisher he wasn't exactly uh he's not you know not a comic nerd but um you know he's familiar with it and you know we agreed on a price and i sent him over the dialogue and all of the uh the comic you know the pages that i'd scanned and uh, again you know i'm in i'm in absolutely no hurry at this point like we're talking uh august of 2019 originally i was going to start you know uploading content to this channel halloween of last year 2019 but this is you know you're gonna find this is part of the reason why so um now we're not talking about a lot of money here uh if i remember correctly it was 120 dollars to be exact for all of stevie goodwin's dialogue and you know permission to use it in a commercial fashion and uh, he delivered he delivered it was a great performance clean audio recording i didn't have to touch it clean it up nothing and so you know here we go i'm so i'm i'm editing i'm putting stuff together now keep in mind uh i had already also hired actor i hired an actress to do maria castle um i had hired uh an actress uh, besides clarissa to do uh, child voices uh i had hired somebody to do um coltrane and so, you know, I got like, you know, a lot of, you know, orders up in the air and I'm waiting for them to come back and, you know, I'm doing what kind of editing I can, just kind of getting the, uh, the frames in place and working on sound design. And so then it comes up. So, uh, the actress that I had hired to, um, play Maria Castle, very small part at the end of part four, uh, we'll just call her the Countess. All right. So, as I said, you know, I always send over as much information as I can. And she'd ask me, like, you know, do I have any, like, have I rendered it? You know, basically, do I have a video yet? And I had done some some pre, some pre pre-renders just with, you know, mostly me um, doing dialogue. And I, you know, I'd, I'd done some filler work for Maria Castle. Just, you know, small parts so I could send it. So I sent it over to her. And, um, you know, it was a Google Drive link. And so I told her, hey, look. You know, don't don't post this link anywhere. This isn't finished. I don't want this, you know, uh, leaking all over the place. You know, I mean, leaking to the internet before the product's even done, because it's not. You know, this is just something I slapped together so I can send it around. You know, I don't want this to be uh, representative or considered, you know, to represent my work and the channel. 
And so uh, I sent it over. And, you know, so she texts me back, you know, a couple days later, whatever. And, uh, oh, yeah, you know, okay. You know, she turned in her work. And I didn't think anything else of it. So I'd say it, it, probably a couple days go by. And then it starts. First, I start getting uh, all these requests for the link. So anybody that, you know, if you share a Google Drive link, it asks you, you know, do you want, do you want to allow sharing or, or no? And so, you know, after I knew she already viewed it, I had turned the link off. And so I started getting all these requests for that specific file. And I'm like, what the hell, you know, what is this? Like, and um, then it comes back, she texts me, and she's, uh, hey, that link's not working. I'm like, you mean, well, I'm like, yeah, I know I turned it off. He said, well, you know, I sent it to some people, and I, I posted it on my Facebook. And I was like, yeah, you know, um, remember I had asked you not to do that. Uh, and like I said, you know, I, I just kind of left it at that. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not reactivating it. And she's like, oh, well, you know, see what the big deal is. And I was like, you know, okay, I understand. Um, you know, I'm not reactivating the link. Again, you know, thanks for your work. And so I was like, you know what? That, you know, that kind of thing is just so unprofessional now I know that look I'm just some you know some nobody you know just some nerd in a room with a bunch of computers but like you know if somebody hires you and they ask you hey you know don't post any of this on the internet right so like let's say you know you're whatever you got cast in you know some independent movie and you know somebody took some pictures of you or you know they've sent you footage to help you with your role and they say look yeah don't don't post this anywhere and then you turn around and do it anyway right like i mean come on so the original actress um i wound up not using her voice work i just cut her from the project you know we you know she still got paid we finished everything i just you know she's just not in it and i cast a different actress to do it um because many times what you see in the beginning from somebody is a preview to problems you're probably going to have at a later date and you can pretty much apply that to anything like you know you go on a date with somebody and there's all these you know this person kind of has like some personality issues or whatever maybe you just don't click um it, it's a good indicator you're gonna have some problems later on right so you can you can apply that to pretty much you know any of your business dealings so i'm like okay you know i just cut that off and so then here comes uh, an email from the actor that I had cast to do Coltrane's voice work, which is basically all of about four lines. Um, so uh, keep in mind, um, I've already paid him. He's already accepted the role. He got all the information up front. He says he no longer feels comfortable doing the role because of you know the racist content but i mean you know that's the character and you accepted the role i'm like okay I, that's fine i respect that um you know like i say there's all kinds of um racist content that i cut from the project because you know i just didn't feel like it added anything to the story it just felt like it was you know really overt and that's kind of that's kind of an M.O. with, with Garth Ennis. You know, he, he kind of takes it over the line more than what's necessary, in my opinion, to establish a character or to establish um, the premise. Which is, you know, one of the reasons I kind of had a hard time getting through the boys at times. Because I felt like a lot of the vulgarity and sexual content was just more than what was needed, you know, after the world and these characters had already been established. But we'll talk about that in another episode. So, as they say, you know, when it, uh, you know, when it rains, it pours. So I said, you know what? Okay, fine, man. You know what? I'll just do it myself. No big deal. It's just, you know, it's like three or four lines, you know, whatever. He sent me back my money. Done, done. So I thought. So, turns out, later on that night, uh, I get another email. And this time, it's from Peter X. Now, I'm already, like basically done 
editing these videos right I'm just waiting for their them to turn in their content so I can drop the blocks in Sony Vegas and I've already you know re-recorded cold trains so the actor with the most dialogue is uh, basically telling me yeah you know what um, I don't want to be a part of this project anymore after reading through the comic again and I was like okay um, this is this is you know much later like I'm based like I'm almost done you know ready to render these videos up and you know he said okay you know, you know whatever I'm gonna refund your money and, um, and then there's like this three page uh, letter as to why and I'm just kind of like well you know um, I don't really need to know why honestly because you know you had all this information you chose to accept the role you took my money right you've put me behind or you know it kind of you know, we basically wasted my time because I've spent so much time you know talking to you and providing you with context and editing this content you know with uh, your voice work so you know his voice works already it's like all up in Sony Vegas already so I'm like okay I said okay that's fine now what killed me is the reasons why I went on ahead and I read through his you know big wall of text in this email and it had to do with uh, you know he's a conservative and he doesn't like the way that America is being portrayed in the comic uh, and so I'm like all right look dude, it's not my comic I didn't write it right um, furthermore it's accurate now like I say this is this is something you run into um, because you know I actually had I believe it was two actors turned down the role um, for various reasons the vulgarity and then the content but you know you run into this kind of thing so he just basically goes down the the, the, the run-of-the-mill rhetoric just you know the usual run-of-the-mill rhetoric that you'll hear you know whatever on Rush Limbaugh or Sean Hannity where you know uh, the United States is the victim and you know they, they completely just change uh, the narrative of the, you know they want to completely alter history about what happened in Vietnam and as I talked about in previous episode like I say you know um, people get sensitive about certain topics you know especially when you start talking about uh, American history and Vietnam is one of those things right it's, it's one of those things like like this is basically the MO of the United States is you know to just uh, present history and omit things in a way that they think absolves you know people of their actions so you know when the, in truth you know the United States did use Agent Orange it, it, it did have lasting effects birth defects uh, that country you know Vietnam is still tore up to this day there's still you know uh, mines and uh, booby traps and you know undetonated uh, bombs in these people's country and so you know I just went down and it's like look, yeah I really didn't really need to read this like I could have wrote this letter for you because I know the rhetoric but you know so think about it this man had all this information up front he agreed to it he delivered about 10 days later and about another few days later he decides he wants me to pull the content so everybody can change their mind, right? You know, everybody changes their mind. There's no, there's no problem with that. But wouldn't it be better to make up your mind before you waste somebody's time and energy? So at this point, you know, I I basically just had it. I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do all this on my own. Which and, it, and it's really a shame because um, I, I felt like his voice was you know really good for the role and he did a really good job now under no circumstances did I you know go off on these people or send them any kind of you know hateful messages I just said okay 
that's fine. You know, as long as the, uh, you know, the exchanger, you know, get refunded my money, you know, no problem, whatever. These are just the kind of things you have to deal with. So, that's mostly why I'm sharing this with you guys. When you are the director, or if you're an actor, or, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you're a musician, you're going to have to deal with this kind of behavior um, from various people, right? Uh, and so I just want to emphasize that no matter how everybody else is behaving around you, and even if, they, if it does piss you off, maintain your professionalism. If you are the one who is supposed to deliver on content, you know, music track, some voice work, whatever, make sure you deliver it on time. And if there is an issue where you're not going to be able to deliver on time, communicate. Communicate that with the producer or the director, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're working on. You know, when somebody does irritate you, when somebody does do something, like don't go off on them. Just okay, hey, all right. You know, I mean, don't let don't let people walk over you. You know, don't get cheated, but. There's no reason to get upset because let me tell you, you know, word of mouth travels, these kinds of things, um, you know, like you hear about this all the time from, you know, big time actors, things like that, musicians that, you know, where they, where they get such a bad reputation where they don't want to work with, like, you know, you get people like, yeah, you know, I don't really want to work with that person. You get that all the time. People have this, you know, reputation of just being a pain in the ass and being a distraction now you know hey now some people they have so much talent that it's willing to you know they're willing to you know, it's worth the risk it's worth dealing with you know whatever problems they may cause because they're just that talented you know like for instance like marlon brando was just known for uh being you know kind of a problematic actor to deal with Right, but he's also, you know, on just some other level, so people were willing to deal with it. They were willing to cast him because he was that good. And you know, you can come up with all kinds of different uh, examples for this. But uh, yeah, so you know, that, that's pretty much it. I just thought I'd share that with you guys, um, so you can reflect on that with your own projects, and uh, just be prepared for it. All right, so again, I want to thank you for checking out the Dope Show podcast. Again, if you enjoy this content, please share it around. And if you haven't checked out uh, Punisher Born Part 1, go right over to my YouTube channel. It's up. And Part 2 will be out this Friday at 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Till then, this is Franklin signing off. Oh, oh.